a better advocate than Allah? You think you can do better than him? You can do better than Allah? Look, he's doing it for you. And this man has presented to you in such a beautiful manner, so easy to read and to apprehend the message. And again, I said, five runs. And if you can't afford it, I said, free, please write and tell us why we, I should give you one for nothing. Tell us why. Not just because you are unemployed. You are unemployed, so you want for nothing. Can you read? Can you use? Hmm? Tell us. Inshallah, you'll get one for nothing. But you know, people, they're too proud, too arrogant. Because again and again, in certain masjids I go, again and again I'm offering to them. I'm asking, have you all got it yet? He says, no. Why not? You can't afford five runs. I said, why didn't you ask for one for nothing? You're too proud. You're too arrogant. I said, on the day of judgment, I'll stand up as a witness against you. I offered these people free, and they wouldn't even take it free. They're too proud. What else? Now, the Westerner, when this, the controversy was at its height, the university contacts me in Durban. They want to have a debate about Rushdie. That's right. They want to debate with us. See, to prove that we are all barbaric, barbarians, they are good people. They are saintly people. They are kind-hearted, compassionate people. That is what they want to prove to the world, to the university students. I said, right? We debate. So they chose a candidate, Professor Gardner. We advertise, should Rushdie die? Should he die? Question mark. Professor Gardner and Ahmad Didat. As soon as we advertise this, they backed out. They said, no, there'll be trouble. You know, the Muslims are barbarians. They might go berserk and start killing people. So we said, look, we are prepared to have three of you at a time, all your professors, your giants of literature, giants, giants. Writers, great writers. We have three of you at a time, under controlled conditions. We have a studio, like the SABC TV. In Durban, we have our own studio. So in the studio, look, these cameras have been brought from, South, from Durban. These are all our. We have been organized, alhamdulillah, into a situation where we can, you know, do something on the same scale as SABC TV. So under control conditions come three at a time. No. I was only asking them two minutes. I said, you see, you say absolute freedom of speech. Rushdie is entitled to absolute freedom of speech. He has a right to say what he likes. I said, that freedom of speech, you give me for two minutes. That's all. What he calls my mother, let me call your mother that. That's all, for two minutes. I'm not asking anything more difficult. What you want to call swear my mother, said, let me use those same words for your mother. And I want to know how you feel. I want to see your reaction. What would you do? They backed out. Now, we have made an offer in Britain and in America. 50,000 pounds. This is a stupendous amount. 50,000 pounds, that's a five, four, that's 20, about 200,000 rand. We are offering to the BBC TV to give Ahmad Didat five minutes, that's all. To give them the best of Rushdie. We give you the best. They want to read this in public. They're reading it in public. Read this book. You know why? To hurt you. Because we know what they're trying to read is to hurt us. You know, swearing my mother, my father, our, our sahabas, Islam, abusing the Islam, abusing the Quran, using filthy, dirty language. So it gives them great pleasure and joy. I said, right, give me five minutes. I give you 50,000 pounds to any charity you name. Give me five minutes on BBC TV and I will give you the best of Rushdie. Something, you say, your uncle has gone mad now. Uncle Dieter has gone mad. 50,000 pounds for five minutes. In America, we send these things and I advertise this. We give you $50,000 for five minutes. 
on American ABC TV, only quote the book. This is what Rushdie says about your mother. This is what he says about Margaret Thatcher. This is what he says about all white women. Maybe I'll touch it tomorrow. Therefore, I'm saying, please, don't bring little children. Don't bring uh, women. If these women are you know, stern enough to, to hear, you know, I don't know. What I'm going to do, I don't know. Look, wallah, I don't know. But it's a very difficult task. In America and Britain, it'll be, I'll be much freer. Because I can use on BBC TV the language that Rushdie uses, I can use it quite freely. Because that country gives you freedom, absolute freedom. So right, give it to Rushdie, give it to me. I just want to quote to you what Rushdie says about your mother. All white women, whether they're Irish, they're Jewish, they're fat, non-differential, all white women, as long as they're white. What he says, what you should do to them. I only want to read to you, page so-and-so. I want to read to you, page so-and-so, what he says. See, this is what the Muslims didn't know. And because we don't know, we cry because they swore us. Because he swore and abused my mother, our mothers, the wives of the prophets, it's hurting us. And we're crying and we're marching and we're dying. And to them it's a big joke. They're getting sadistic pleasure. Says, you Muslims, you have been a challenge all along. You are the guys who's telling everybody, he says, look, don't drink. Well, you may be drinking yourself. But you, when you start preaching, you say, you mustn't drink. You mustn't gamble. You mustn't take interest. You mustn't dance. You mustn't be promiscuous. No? You mustn't eat the pig. Don't you tell them that? You might be eating it yourself on the sly. But the Muslims, when he talks, he talks straight. It's like telling the Hindu, what are you worshipping? Men, monkeys, elephants, snakes. Telling the Christian, what is this three in one, one in three? Huh? Can you see? You are a challenge. The Muslim is a challenge. The very fact that you wear a, a kufia, you are a challenge to them. You know that? You are an offense. After 300 years, he failed with you. 300 years, he had been hammering your fathers. You know that? You didn't come here because you wanted to come here. You were brought here by force. My so-called Malay brother, I'm talking about. Your forefathers, 300 years ago, they brought them from Indonesia. Those who were fighting for their freedom, they were captured as prisoners of war and shipped to the Cape of Good Hope and sold to the white men as slaves. Then when the British conquered Malaysia, those of our brethren who were fighting for their freedom, they were captured as prisoners of war and shipped to the Cape of Good Hope, Good Hope for the white man, and sold to the white men as slaves. Therefore you carry their names. Fuad Hendrix. That Hendrix is Christian, Fuad Hendrix is Muslim. What is this Hendrix, Hendrix? You know, look, I'm not, wallah, I'm not trying to make a joke of it, but not this, because they were our slave masters. We were sold to them as slaves. Our fathers met in private. They were not allowed to even make salat, pray. So you meet people, they, under those conditions. So what's your name? So Muhammad. And you, Yusuf. And you, Dawood. And you, again, Muhammad. And you, Suleiman. And you, again, Yusuf. How do you know who's who? So which Muhammad? He said, no, I work for Hendrix. So, you know, when we talk about you in the future, Muhammad Hendrix. And he's the guy who was for, slaving for Hendrix. And you, for Fenter, Daud Fenter. And look, this, this is how the names came about. They changed our language. They changed our language. You speak Afrikaans at home. You are more at home with Afrikaans as a mother tongue than English. You are bilingual, alhamdulillah. Both languages, English and Afrikaans. You are good at both. But you speak Afrikaans more. How did that happen? You lost your own language. To such an extent that once, if you remember, those of you who were there in the city hall, I was speaking about Christianity, communism, or Islam, which has the answers to the problems of South Africa. And during the course of that talk, I was giving you people samples of different languages. In the city hall, I says, look, English. Is there anything funny about English? 